The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 cost $399 and it was introduced back in June 1993. It can be used on DSLR cameras as well as mirrorless cameras using this EF to RF adapter from Canon. In November 2020, Canon announced this RF 50mm f1.8 lens. It can be used only on the mirrorless system, it costs $159 and it's the cheapest Canon RF lens you can buy at this point. So which one of these is the best for both photo and video? First of all, it's really mind-blowing to me that the EF50 1.4 is almost 30 years old and we are good friends uh, for about 10 years now. But in the same time, I was so excited to test the newest RF version, especially on the video side. So the very first thing that I like about these prime lenses is that they have a fixed aperture. And this is great for maintaining a constant exposure and a blurry background. Of course, there's a little difference in the blur between 1.4 and 1.8. You'll see some photos a bit later, but in general terms, I think that especially for video, a constant aperture gives you some awesome results and you can have it with these two lenses. The EF 1.4 weighs 290 grams while the RF version weighs only 160 grams and that's actually an impressive difference. But, but, if you want to use the EF 1.4 on a Canon RF body, you'll need to add 110 grams more for the adapter you'll need to use. And you should think about this because now, if you want to use the EF 1.4 on a mirrorless, it weighs 400 grams versus 160 grams that the RF 1.8 has. And by the way, the EF to RF adapter costs $99 and in total, it will cost you $498 to use this old lens on a new mirrorless camera. So 498 versus 159, that's a $339 difference. Of course, you need to add the taxes if you live in Europe. But let's see if the new RF 1.8 is worth it overall. So regarding the size, the EF 1.4 has 5 centimeters in length, while the RF 1.8 has 4 centimeters. But when you attach the adapter on the EF, the difference in length becomes even more visible. The EF becomes 7.4 centimeters long versus 4 centimeters for the RF. There's not much of a difference when we are looking at the grip. I attached both lenses to a Canon EOS R and there's plenty of room for the fingers as you can see in the images. The EF 1.4 has a 58 filter thread size versus the RF 1.8 that uses a 43 diameter for filters. Now, if you already own bigger filters, you can always use step-up ring adapters and I highly recommend something like this one from Amatoc. They have all the sizes you need. I bought the 43 to 82 ring and it's awesome because I can use all my ND filters with this adapter when shooting videos with the 50 millimeter RF. It's a very cheap investment. Now, before speaking about the autofocus test sharpness, let me give you some more details that really matter. For example, none of the lenses have image stabilization. Let's say this is not a problem when using them for photography, you can always raise the shutter speed to obtain sharp photos and freeze the motion, but on video it could be a problem because the footage can become shaky. So I recommend you a camera that at least has some digital image stabilization like the Canon RP and R which are full frame bodies, but also crop cameras like the Canon R10 and R7. The R7 has in-body stabilization and also digital stabilization, so it could be a very good option. You'll find links to all the products in the description of this video. The EF 1.4 has a focus ring and a manual focus switch, but the RF 1.8 is a bit different. It has a ring that can be used in two ways, for manual focusing, or to control different functions that you can assign from the camera menu, like the ISO, the shutter speed, the aperture, and so on. And you can switch between these two options using this dedicated physical switch on the lens. There's also a difference regarding the minimum focus distance. Let's say I want to take a photo of this Canon charger. With the EF 1.4, I cannot get closer than 45 centimeters, while on the RF 1.8, the focus distance is 30 centimeters, so that's a clear win for the new RF lens. 
I'm gonna show you some photo tests in a few seconds. Make sure you press the thumbs up on this video if you find value. But from the start, we need to understand that the minimum aperture on the EF is 1.4 and on the RF is 1.8. So it will be obvious that the blur is a bit different, but then I will show you photos with the same apertures so we can judge better. Also, the EF 1.4 has eight rounded aperture blades, while the RF 1.8 has seven rounded blades. But let's take a look at the photos. On the left, you will always see photos taken with the old EF version and on the right with the new RF version. The first test was to see how is the sharpness at the minimum aperture for each of these lenses. I focused on the end of this bench, so let's see the sharpness for the 50 EF at 1.4. It's not bad for a 30 year old lens, but let's check it for the 50 RF 1.8. Okay, I don't think I need to say who is the clear winner here. It's obviously the RF at 1.8. Now let's check the blur the bokeh. You see uh, this pole in the background, it's more defined here on the 50 RF 1.8 than here on this image taken with the uh, 50 EF 1.4. Also, this tree right here is more defined at 1.8. Here's the same shot, but with both lenses at F 1.8. Now they are very similar in terms of bokeh, but the RF is the winner again here when it comes to the sharpness. The EF50 is still soft. Here's another angle, but this time with both lenses at F8. Now we're talking. The EF50 is very sharp as well as the RF50. Now, we don't have too much separation here, but let's take a look at the blur in the background. Well, I don't see any difference here. Uh, they both look very good. This is with both lenses at f1.8, and if I zoom in here on the branches, the chromatic aberration is very present in this case, and to be honest, it's more visible on the EF version. Another f1.8 shot with both lenses focusing on the door handle of this car in this area. Let's zoom in on the EF. This is the result. A little bit soft again. Now let's see the RF. And yes, this is definitely much sharper, and without any distracting chromatic aberration like on the EF. So again, the RF is the winner. And I have a portrait here as well with both lenses again at f1.8, so let's see the sharpness. I think it's very clear that in multiple scenarios, the new Canon RF 1.8 is the winner against the EF 1.4, at least for the photography side. Now for the focus breathing, on the left side, you can see the EF 1.4, but Oops, what's happening there? A little bit of focus hunting. That's okay. You're just too old for video, my friend. <laughs> and also, there's focus breathing. You can see how the image zooms in and out when I change the focus point. And the focusing is slow as well. Now, if you thought the results will be different on the RF, you are wrong, because the new RF 51.8 has focus breathing too. However, the good thing on the RF lens is the fact that it focuses fast and it's precise. So from this specific test, I can say that the RF is on the same level with the EF when it comes to focus breathing, but the RF wins at focusing speed and precision. This is the eye tracking test with the EF. As you can see, there's a bright background and looks like the EF is struggling a bit. And also I will let you hear the sound of the focusing. This lens has an ultrasonic motor, but it's an older one, of course. Keep in mind that this sound is not so loud actually, but the internal microphone is picking it up. But anyway, you can see how the lens struggles here, especially when I go out of frame and come back. This is not a lens designed for video, for eye tracking for sure, because at the second attempt, it simply stopped focusing for this specific frame. Now let's take a look how the RF 51.8 handled this scenario for the eye tracking. Let's hear the sound of the lens. Well, it's definitely quieter than the EF because it uses an STM motor. It's more stable and the focusing speed is much more acceptable, even though the focus precision on the eye is not the strongest point of this lens. It struggles when I re-enter the frame. 
Here's another test with the Canon EF50 1.4 on the left and the Canon RF50 1.8 on the right side. This frame doesn't have that much contrast, so I noticed that both lenses were faster when it comes to focusing speed, but also they handled much better the times when I re-entered the frame. But in this test, to me, it's more clear that the RF is the better lens. The noise that you hear when these lenses are focusing could be a real problem if you're shooting video and you have an external microphone on the camera. But if the person has a lavalier microphone or you're using a boom mic, this noise will not be recorded in the cameras. The 50 RF 1.8 is the better lens for me after all these tests. It delivers sharper photos. It's not 1.4, but at 1.8, I really like the sharpness, to be honest. It still creates a nice blur behind the subject on video as well. And it focuses fast enough for a low budget lens. But in the same time, I think there's an advantage for the EF version if it's used for photography. It can be mounted on a full frame, even if it's a DSLR or a mirrorless if you get the adapter, but also on crop sensor cameras on both EF and RF systems. While the 51.8 RF can only be mounted on the RF mirrorless cameras, full frame or crop. So what do you think about these lenses? Tell me in the comments. Here you have another lens comparison. I'm Christy, catch you in the next video.